Hey, and so thankful for you all being here today. We're, we're continuing folks on starting over again. Uh, change and transition and just life in general, it's always an opportunity to start over again doing something. You can actually pick any time to start over again. And it's still the month of January, so some of you are still thinking about plans that you have for the year and what you want to do and, and maybe do differently. And, but what we're trying to focus on is not just those plans that may not have anything to do with you walking more faithfully with God. And it may not have anything to do with what it means to, to be a light into the darkness with the people that you run around with. Uh, what we want to focus on is keeping the main thing the main thing. And so for about the last three or four weeks, we've been focusing on what it means to start over again. And, and it really comes down to, to what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6. He was talking to a bunch of his disciples, and they were worried. Some of you were worried this morning, and you, you've got some pretty high anxiety about things. Uh, I don't know what that is, and maybe the person sitting next to you, even someone who you share a house with may not know what's going on with you. But you've got some concerns, you've got some worries, you've got some anxieties, and the disciples did also. And after listening to, to what they were saying, Jesus said this, and hopefully it's a good word for you as well. Tomorrow has enough worries of its own. By worrying, we can't change anything about what may or may not happen tomorrow, whatever that tomorrow is for you. But he said this to them, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will fall into place. Seek first. So whatever that thing is that you're anxious about, that thing that is consuming your brain, that's consuming your bandwidth, of, that's all you were thinking about, whatever that thing is that's going to happen tomorrow tomorrow, or the next day, or even that imagined thing that really is not going to happen. Whatever that is, the first thing that we are all called to do is to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything else will fall into place. So one of the things we've been trying to do is try to keep that in perspective. So a couple weeks ago, I talked about submission, you know, putting, putting first things first. You know, submission of, of going, okay, in order for me to be the best husband I need to be, I need to submit first. In order for me to, to, to give God my best, I need to put first things first. Last week we talked about prayer. And today we're talking about being shaped by the word. As we put first things first and we start talking about starting over again, we've got to be shaped by the word. So I want to share this one verse with you from Jesus. He's actually talking to his disciples. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray for you and I'm going to invite you to pray for me at the same time, okay? So here, here's the word. In John chapter 15, Jesus says this, I am the vine and you are the what? If you remain in me and I in you, you'll bear much. And apart from me, you can do. Yeah, let's talk about being shaped by the word today, okay? Really, as I pray for you, I'd love for you to pray for me, okay? Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you that you are the vine and that we are the branches. And Lord, we, we want to be even more so. Uh, so God, I pray that you would inhabit this place and inhabit the praises of your people. Inhabit the anxiety and the concerns and the worry that some of us have about any number of things. Uh, God, we lean on you that you would be that peace that surpasses all understanding that comes with knowing you as Lord and Savior that your Holy Spirit would move in this place to awaken our minds and our hearts and our spirits, Lord, and awaken our hands and feet that as we leave this place today, we would know that we've encountered the living presence of the Lord God Almighty. God, we pray that you will have your way with all the mamas and daddies and all the kids in this place today, that your kingdom would come and your will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So in order for us to talk about being shaped by the word, we're, we, we can do this in one of two ways. One is we can, uh, you can spend the next couple minutes me just telling you about scripture and y'all are going to zone out if you haven't already pretty soon. Not that the scripture is boring at all, but for many of us, we don't know what to do with that. Or I can share with you how I, I wrestle with the scripture shaping me. And, and maybe that will be helpful. So if you'll follow me up here. I want to give you an example of what this looks like. So we want to give a shout out to the library people. I robbed the library this morning of their chair and their lamp, and they didn't know what happened. So if you're part of the library, we love you, and I will return this later. Okay? So I want you to think about this. This 
on, on, on weekday mornings, for example, being shaped by the word, this is how it looks for me. And it's going to look differently for some of you. When, when I wake up in the morning, generally being shaped by the word is not the first thing I do. Maybe it should be. Some of you are more disciplined than I am. But what I found is that in the mornings, my role is to get the kids fed, take them to school, drop them off, and then come home. Uh, Michelle and I work out a pretty good deal. I'm more of a morning person. She's more of an evening person. So it actually works out really well. And I found that when I tried to get up earlier and start doing the Word and doing Bible study and devotion, I'm distracted by it because I'm thinking, okay, in, in five more minutes, I've got to wake up the kids. Or I wonder what I'm going to make for breakfast. Or do we, or do we have enough stuff for lunch? Uh, my mind, I'm distracted. So what I found is instead of trying to force that to happen, I go ahead and get the kids up get them out of the house, and then come back. And there, and there are mornings, I'll be honest with you, where it probably would have been helpful if I would have gotten into the Word first because sometimes it gets a little frustrating uh, for them, not me, but it gets frustrating for them to get out the door, right? Uh, but that's just a pattern that I've fallen into. I'm just describing it. I'm not prescribing it. Everybody's going to be a little different. But then when I come home, uh, usually what I do is I turn off all the lights in the living room except for one light over the mantle, just very little little light and open the blinds just a little bit to where as the sun is coming up it's it's beginning to to come into the house for me it's just setting the tone it's I don't know it it just works for me that way and then what what works for me is is I pull out my phone and I I pull out my phone because I have an app it's called the YouVersion Bible app some of you may be familiar with it if you're not we're going to show share it on uh, social media and during the week and I've got a couple of different reading plans that I use on my version by left while I'm sitting in my chair that I actually fit in kind of like this chair. Has anybody noticed that this chair is not proportionate to my body? I look kind of big in it. Uh, I haven't found a chair yet that is actually proportionate to me, so this is what it looks like. And so as I'm sitting there getting as comfy as I can, I pull up my version Bible app, and I found that I have to have order. I, I have to have a plan because if I don't have a plan, uh, I will find every excuse in the book not to dive into the Word. And it's not because I want to. It's because I recognize that I need structure. And I need something to guide me. Otherwise, I just end up reading the same scriptures over and over again because they're my favorites. And I'm not exposed to things that I'm not familiar with. So I've got two plans that I'm, I'm reading through now. And before the hustle and bustle gets started generally... I'll pull up, it, pull up my, my app. And, and I want you to tell you, I want to tell you, it's not always easy to do that. Because in my mind, I, I, in many ways, I think I'm pretty disciplined. But in this way, it's a real struggle because I'm thinking, uh, man, I've got a meeting today and I need to respond to emails. And uh, I've got somebody I've got to talk to later today. And I haven't checked the news yet. And I haven't checked my email yet. And I bet I've got an email response from somebody. And then I'm also thinking of, of like Facebook going, man, I'd really like to just go over to Facebook, and sometimes I succumb to that temptation, just go over to Facebook and see what's going on, which it, it, when the first part of the day, I have found for myself, if I start off with Facebook and don't start off with the scripture, it's kind of like beginning my day eating cotton candy. It tastes good, and it's really sweet, but then I look up, and it's been 15 minutes, and it's cool to see what everyone else is doing, and some of it's very uplifting. Others are just like, what is this person thinking? But anyway, that's social media, right? And I found that because I know that's part of me, I know that's part of my temptation, I try not to open it. Doesn't mean I always succeed, but I try not to. So being shaped by the word. And so I, I read my, my devotion. I usually do it on the phone, and on the phone app, I can highlight different things. Sometimes I bring out my, my notepad and I, and I make notes in it. And then other times, every once in a while, I'll bring out the paper version, because in this, in the paper version, I've got two translations that are side by side, which are, which are really helpful many times, but most of the time I use my phone, and then when I get done, then I can read the news and do crossword puzzle and get ready for the day and all that, but then there's other times, y'all, when schedules just don't allow me to do that. I'll drop the kids off, and I have to go to a lunch meeting, oh, I'm sorry, a breakfast meeting, or meet somebody, and when that's the case, I really try to get there quick enough to where if I have five or 10 minutes, I try, I'm, the operative word is try, as I try to pull out my phone before I go into the restaurant to do my devotional if I didn't get a chance to do it. Because I'm made up in such a way 
that left to my own devices, if I don't have some guidance, I will really mess things up. I, I'll, I may end up saying things in a meeting that I don't need to say. I'm, I may end up pressing things that I don't need to press because the Word of God helps shape who I am. And without that shaping left to my own devices, I'll do my own thing. I know that about myself. So when I'm thinking about being shaped by, by the Word, one of the things that I love about the Word is that the Word, this is the first thing you might want to write down or remember, take, pull out your phone to look at, to remember. The Word of God reveals the, the character and mind of God. I found that for myself. And actually, I found that to be about our heritage and our history as Christians also. We, we understand Scripture not just as a list of rules, but it reveals the character and mind of God. That's the reason that I keep on being drawn back to it. Because once again, I understand myself enough that I'm a sinner, that left my own devices, I'll push God out and start thinking that my ways are God's ways. And that gets me and other people in a lot of trouble. So if, I, if, if the word of God shapes me by helping me understand the character and mind of God, then, then look at these lamps. In Psalm 119, it says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When I was growing up, uh, I was part of a youth choir. And for about three or four years straight, it seemed like, every year we sang that Amy Grant song. It sounds like this. Thy word is... That's exactly how Amy Grant sounds when she sings that. So <laughs> some of you don't have any idea who that is or what that song is, but those of us of a certain generation remember that. And I, and I believed it, and I loved it. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. But I can tell you, even at that moment, I wasn't reading Scripture. It was in the pews. I mean, look in front of your, in your pews in front of you. You've got a pew Bible. What I would use the pew Bible for on Sunday mornings growing up is I would use it to put a piece of paper on or the offering envelope so I could doodle. It gave me something hard to, to put my piece of paper on. So even though I was saying about Scripture, I, I didn't really live it, but as I've grown into it, I know that the Word is a lamp into my feet and a light into my path. Otherwise, I start stumbling over things relationally, as a leader, and in my own quiet life also. It reveals the character and mind of God that He's provided this as a lamp into my feet and a light into my path. Uh, it also helps me remember that I didn't create the world and that the world doesn't revolve around me. You all probably don't need to be reminded of that, but I do. And if you go back to Genesis and the whole creation story, the, the 31st verse of the, of the first chapter says that God looked at all that he had made and it was very what? Yeah, so, so God is the one who created things. And he, I understand through scripture in Psalm 139 that God knit each one of us together in our mother's womb before one day came to be. And if God created it and it was good, that means that there isn't any junk out there. We, we all make dumb decisions and there are consequences for our actions, but God did not intend for us to be junk. And, and as, a, as a husband and a, and a dad, I try to remember that about myself, but also my family. And, and there's some wives that, ladies, you need to tell your husband that God doesn't create junk because your husband needs to be affirmed. And he doesn't just need to hear it from you. He needs to hear the word of God say that. And, and husbands, there's some of you who need to speak life into your wives because they're just looking for some affirmation. And maybe you just need to remind them because of God's character and mind that he didn't create junk, including them. And then there's other, others of you who need to tell your kids. Uh, your kids are going through a rough patch. And you need to be reminded that your child... Is, is not broken or thrown away. But maybe you need to speak life into them, not your life, but God's life, that he created them and that everything he created was good. I, I need to be reminded of that. And maybe some of you do also. It, it also shapes me and, and it helps me understand God's character in mind. When, when I go back to some of those scriptures that are pretty familiar that some of us have heard before, like in a, in a funeral or when people are going through loss, some of you have heard the 23rd Psalm before. Uh, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. That's, that's because of God's provision, not because we're, we just kind of come together. It's God's character and mind that reveals that when we're going through those darkest valleys, that there's nothing that we lack in him. That reveals God's character. 
I need to be reminded of that. So that's why in, for, for most days, this is, I, 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 sometimes even if I don't feel like it, I try to make sure that I do this. And I'll be honest with you, sometimes I read the passage and I go, okay, I've done that. But that's not what it's intended for. It's not about consuming. It's for chewing on and applying. I also understand the character of, and mind of God. You know, through, through John 3.16, you know, you'll probably see that at the Super Bowl next week. And, you know, let's, let's all say John 3.16 and 17 together. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son so that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. That, that's not about you accepting Jesus. It is very much part of that, but it's all based on what God has done first. That's God's character and his mind that he sent, God took the first step and sent Jesus so that we would not perish but have everlasting life. I need to remember that. God is the main actor in this drama. I'm not. You're not. And to be remind, reminded by that and, and to be shaped by God's character in mind. Uh, also, I, I cling to this, this passage that is pretty paramount in shaping who, who I am in my worldview. It's, it's the words of Jesus again. I, I, it's not about making up the words of Jesus that kind of fit what I want to happen. It's about what are the words of Jesus? What's the character and mind of Jesus that have been passed down through generations of Christians for the last 2,000 years that we cling to? What, what's the rock of, of our foundation? And Jesus was talking to his disciples, and, and he said this, I am the way and the truth and the what? No one comes to the Father except through me. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. There, there's, Jesus is not a, a secondary attribute. Jesus is the main attribute of who we are. And this is how we figure out who we are. That, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And I want to know more of what that is, not just so I can preach better sermons, but so I can walk more faithfully as a husband and, and more faithfully as a parent and more faithfully as, as someone who works alongside other people. I, I want to be shaped by the word of God so that I can be the best coworker or best boss I can be. And, and when I interact with people who, who aren't part of my family and I don't work, work with, I, I want... I want to be shaped so much by the word that people walk away going, uh, I don't, that, there's something ab about that guy in a, in a positive way, not a negative way, but in a positive way. And, and I, I wonder why. And I, I want to say it's because, man, I need all the help I can get. And so I try to be shaped by the word. I try. But then I also remember in, in Romans chapter 6, one of these uh, aspects of being shaped by the character and mind of God is that many times I don't know what to pray and I don't know what to do and I'm at a loss. And some of you feel that way many times also. And we're here like, I, I don't know what to pray and I don't know what to do and I don't know about this family member. And, I, and, and one of the things that helps shape me is to help me understand that it's not about my strength that Jesus, that Jesus then acts. It's in my weakness that God's strength is made known. It's not when I have all the answers. It's not when I'm in in confidence going, yes, this is what we should do. It's sometimes I'm going, man, I have no idea what to do. And I'm shaped by the word that people through the ages have understood this, that in the same way the Spirit helps us in our what? Yeah, in the same way the Spirit helps us in our what? This is the passage of Scripture. It's not just you and I coming together and coming up with, with cool things. It's us being un understanding that God has shaped the body of Christ down through the last 2,000 years and that when we are weak, God's strength is made known. When we do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans, and he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the, inner spir of, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. So if you talk about the, the character and mind of God, that means that I want to learn more about this God, that even when I don't know what to do, and, and I really want to pray that prayer from, from Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, where it says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and don't lean on your own understanding, but in everything you do, acknowledge him, 
and he will make your path straight. I believe that. I love that verse. But there's still many times I'll pray that and go, I still have no idea what to do. I, I still don't know how to respond. I still don't know how to act. I'm trying to be attentive, but I still don't. And, and what I love about being shaped by the word of God is it reveals the character and mind of God that even when I don't know what to do, and even when you don't know what to do, the Spirit of God intercedes on your behalf. And with your groaning and with your moaning and with your frustration, the Spirit of God intercedes for you out of God's character. And well, how are you supposed to know that unless you see that down through the ages, the Word has shaped people to know that they are not in this world by themselves? This, this, these are some of the things that have been helpful for me about understanding that the Word of God shapes us through the mind and, and character of God. But we also understand that the word reveals what it means to follow Jesus. I, I, I've, the word reveals what it means to follow Jesus. That's the second thing if you want to keep score of stuff. Uh, I have found because I am a sinner in need of grace that if I don't have some guidelines, I, I will really make the whole path of walking with Jesus into something that only fits in with what I would do anyway. Y'all follow me? If I don't have some guidelines to help me understand that, that, that this is actually what it means to be a disciple, then I will make being a disciple something that, that just benefits me and into my own image. I know that about myself. And maybe you're beginning to have that recognition as well. But Scripture helps reveal, offer some guidelines as to what it means to actually follow Jesus. For example, if you go to 1 John chapter 4, that's in the New Testament. The early Christian church understood what it meant to be shaped by, by God in this way, to what it means. And, and here's, here's what the writer says to the Christians here. He goes, dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from where? Now, that, that's huge. Don't, don't skip over that. Scripture reveals the, the mind and character of God, and it reveals that love doesn't come from me, and it doesn't come from you. And it doesn't come from some movie. And it doesn't come through some music. It actually comes from God. And that changes everything. That love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows who? Yeah. Whoever does not love God does not know God because God is what? Yeah. And this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. He didn't just send Jesus into the world that we might be saved by him, but that we might live through him. I want to know what that means. I want to dig in more. I, I don't want to just be blessed by God. I want to live uh, uh, through God. I, I think my family is better off when, when I'm trying to be aligned with what, what God is shaping me to be, not just what I want God to bless me for. And, and maybe, you, maybe your family is as well. And then they describe what love is. This is scripture. This is God's word. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and he sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. That means that Jesus' life, death, and resurrection really mean something. It's not just this cotton candy version of love. This is sacrificial love that we're talking about. That, that, that love hurts many times. I, I need to figure out more what that means for me. I need to be shaped by that. That's why I, do, uh, that's why I try to do that most, Sunday, most days. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. So God's word reveals what it means to follow Jesus. So I want you to think about your, your own family or your workplace or your church people or whatever your people are. If God's word reveals how to actually live as a disciple, what is it that's guiding you? Now, now some of us are going to go, man, I, I don't have time. I don't like reading. It's all confusing to me. I don't get it. I understand where you're coming from. I do. It's, it's got to be baby steps. I'm telling you where I am today. I wasn't at this place 20 years ago. And there have been ebbs and flows to this season, okay, these seasons in my life. I'm just telling you right now, snapshot, this is where I am today. 
But for some of you, you're like, I, I, I don't know what the scripture is, nor am I really interested in finding it out. I, I want to I graciously and directly want to challenge you. In your GPS, you have a grow, pray, and study guide. You have that tool every week. That maybe it's just one scripture a day that you begin to discipline yourselves to look at every morning. We actually have it on the church Facebook page also. That every morning, by 6 a.m., uh, most mornings, you go on there and the scripture for the day is there. If you're on social media already, when you open up social media while you're laying in bed and you're trying to wake up and your eyes are trying to come open, go to the church Facebook page and you'll see the word for the day. Maybe the first thing you need to do is just, just simmer on that for a little bit. Maybe you won't pull out your phone and, and look at a Bible reading plan or open up the scriptures, but that one verse will help shape who you are. And maybe you're like, I don't, I don't like reading. I don't want to do that. Then great. Open up Spotify or your Apple Music or go to the Version Bible app, once again, that we'll share. And you can pick a verse and it will read to you while you're going down the road. It will. And the key is whatever you listen to, stop it. Maybe play it again. Stop it. And then chew on it before you go do what you're doing. That's, that's how we're shaped by what it means to be a disciple. Just, just start small. And if you're not doing this regularly, try one day this next week. And then if you do one day, give yourself a high five, give thanks to God, and then maybe next week you try for two days. And begin to let the word of God shape you, not just from what the pastor says, but from the inside out. And, and the last thing I, I want to share is this, is that the word of God sends you and me into the world to make a difference. So the word of God, we chew on it. We figure out the mind and character of God. It leads us to figure out what it means to be a disciple. But then the word of God also gets us out of the chair and sends us out into the world to make a difference. So this physical act of me getting up out of the chair, if Bible reading to you means that you stay in your comfy chair or recliner all day, then you're not really putting faith into action. That, that our job is to take the scripture, have it begin to shape and mold us, but then we actually go into the laboratory of life. It's kind of like scripture reading is sitting in the classroom version of your biology class. You're taking notes, you're taking notes, you're taking notes, you're taking notes, and you go, yes, I understand the theory of it. But then when you go to the lab and you start dissecting and you start pulling things apart, and you go, whoa, this is a lot different than what it was in the class. That's the reason why you have labs. And the word of God sends you out into the world to do the lab work of actually what it means now to love God in action. It sends you into the, to the lab of the world to figure out what it means to actually love people who are unlovable. It's one thing to think about it in the isolation of your recliner or in your quiet spot. It's another thing to take that scripture and go, oh yeah, this guy, I don't like this guy and he gets on my nerves and I really want to tell him off, and I just really want to ghost him, and I really want to give him the cold shoulder, because he's a jerk. And, and Jesus may know he's a jerk also, okay? But your job is to take the word of God that has shaped you in the quiet and take it out public and go, look, uh, nothing God created is junk. Even this guy. Even this guy. And so when all of the people that you go to school with and all the people that you work with are giving this guy the cold shoulder, you're the one who is reflecting the light of Christ because the word of, of God has shaped you. And you are going up to that person going, How is it, how's it going today? And they may say something that's really off-putting, but you grin anyway and you go, yeah, I hope you have a great day. And then on your way back to the office or to your chair, you're going, Lord Jesus, son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner, because I want to rip this guy's head off, okay? But, but, you, but you do it. The word of God also shapes how we interact with each other within the body of Christ. We've got to take that into our real life relationships, y'all. The, the church is God's idea. The scripture tells us that. Christ is the head. Scripture tells us that, and we play follow the leader. Scripture tells us that. We're not a social club. We're not a country club. We're not just a group of individual people who want what we want. Look, we are the body of Christ. And because of that, we are shaped in how we interact with one another. 
We, we, we expect the best of each other until we're disappointed otherwise. That, that Jesus said when someone sins against you, he's talking to Christians he, or disciples. He's saying, look, people of faith, when someone sins against you, you're the one who takes the first step towards that person. That's how we operate. And if that person will not listen to you, get someone that that person respects. See, we're shaped by the word of God. There's a guideline for this. And if that person still won't listen to you, then you go before the loving community of the church and go, hey, man, we want to be reconciled with you. But you're not listening to me and you're not listening to your friend. We're doing it in love. How can we move forward in reconciliation? Most of the time, we as church people, because we're not shaped by the word, we'll go nuclear on somebody. We'll gossip about somebody. We'll throw grenades out the door as we're leaving. That's not who we are. We're shaped by the body uh, I'm sorry, the word of God to be the body of Christ. And when we fail, we don't expect the worst of people. We offer our hand up and go, yeah, man, I mean, I'm in, in, in all churchy language, forgive me for saying this, but going, man, this sucks, I know. But come on, let's go. Uh, you know, reconciliation and redemption is a real thing. Let's go. Come on, we, this is a new day. The word of God shapes us to go out into the world and make a difference. If you pride yourselves on reading devotionals every morning or being a part of a Sunday school class that has curriculum, but you're not going out in the world to live it, then the word has returned void. And that's not what the word is supposed to do. It's meant to shape us so that we can be the people that God's created us to be. See, a couple of years ago, my, my son, who's now 20, was, was driving down the road and he had a wreck. And I'm so thankful that the guardrails were there. I don't know what he was doing. He looked down or he's playing with his phone or doing the computer or, I don't, or the phone or the radio. I don't know. But instead of going off into a ditch or hitting another car, you know what he hit? He hit the guardrail. And it totaled our car. But he hit the guardrail and, and, and he was alive to live another day. I need guardrails. The Word of God provides guardrails that sometimes I crash headlong into. But the guardrails are not there to snuff my life out. They're to keep me alive in the way I should be going. For some of us, I would just want to pray a prayer of release for you who think that Scripture means that you're being shackled. Scripture, the Word of God, is not death. It's actually life. And I want more of that life for me, not just to preach better sermons, but for me to be who I'm called to be. And I want you to want more of that, to be shaped by the word, not just for our benefit, but to the glory of God and the benefit of those outside of these walls. Hey, guys, let's, let's start over again and keep first things first.